Okay, thank you very much, Kagi. So let's proceed, right? Now, guys, we'll talk about something called as containers, right? When we were creating the web application, if you recall, see, we discussed when we were yes, deploying. Uh, excuse me. Uh -huh. I think uh, we want to run uh, the Jenkins container. There's something that we use as the call Tomcat 9. At what level are we supposed to integrate that? Sorry? I said we want to run the uh, 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 Jenkins pipeline. There's something like we call a Tomcat 9 that we need to install. That is essential for the run of this pipeline. I don't know where we're supposed to integrate it. You want to run a Jenkins container? Oh, a pipeline. There's something we call Tomcat 9. I don't Tomcat. know where we're supposed to inter integrate it in this uh, project. From where are you reading this information? No, the thing is that I said I started this program. That's why when I wanted to 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 uh to to uh build up the machine, I do not have that access to to the to the free site I was supposed to pay because I used my own free thing last time when I was doing it. So in order, there's, there's a program called Tomcat 9. If I can recall, the program I have Tomcat 9, they have to give Tom. some credentials and then uh, before we run the pipeline. I'm, I'm unable to get your query, what you are saying. I said in running the, uh, this uh, pipeline on Jenkins, there's something we call Tomcat 9 that we were supposed to install to be able to help us run this uh, this pipeline properly. So I don't know if we're supposed to, in, in this system, we're not supposed to integrate it. Tomcat 9, is it not essential here too? Not mandatory, we deployed the Maven, right? See what yeah. is Tom, Tomcat 9, it's just a version. It's not mandatory yeah. every time customer would be using Tomcat 9. They might be using Tomcat 10, they might be using some other version. Yeah, because I don't see the Tomcat, I'd say perhaps that's why the thing should be failing. No, no, see, I, I even tried to show you the reason here as well. I hope you can see here. Does it say anywhere it is failing because of Tomcat 9? I hope you can see here. It says it is failing because of so-and-so reason. It says fail to execute goal or dot Apache dot Maven plugin. Due to this Maven plugin, it, it failed. Maven surface plugin 2.14.0 test default test on for my shuttle execution default test failed. So it is clearly saying it is failing because of some plugin issue. This Maven plugin it is failing. It is not failing because of Tomcat 9. Tomcat 9 is not even required here. Tomcat 9 is not even required here. Right? Okay. So, so in this case, is there a means that uh, we can reinstall the, the Tomcat 9 or the, the, uh, the Mavi Pro plugin? What installing? You want to check for the Tomcat 9 plugin? Let's check it. So we can go to configure. Yeah. Okay. Let's check it here. So okay. we can go to dashboard. Mavi. Manage Jenkins. We can go to plugins. We can go to available plugins. And we can type here Tomcat. So I hope we see that there is no Tomcat 9 plugin available. In fact, there is no Tomcat plugin available. Okay. Now, there is something called as, there is a concept of something called as containers, right? The earlier when we were deploying the web application, we discussed when we were deploying the web application. First of all, we need to have a subscription. Then we need to have a resource group. Then we need to give a name to the application. Let's say I give it a name, Jitin Application 1. So URL would be Jitin Application 1 dot Azure website store. This will be the URL. Now it asks us how do we want to publish the application. So we have multiple options. We can publish it using code. We can publish it using Docker container, right? So we'll try to understand the concept of this Docker container. So what I'll do, I'll draw two diagrams. Those diagrams will give you a good understanding of the containers. So let's say this is first diagram. 
which is representing virtual machine. And this is second diagram, which will be representing Docker building. So let me draw it quickly. So let's say this diagram is representing virtual machine. And this diagram will be representing Docker container, right? Now, let's say here we have some hardware, maybe some big hardware, let's say 512 CPU and two terabyte of size. On top of this hardware, maybe we can have some host operating system. Let's say Windows Server 2019. On top of this, Microsoft would have deployed some virtualization layer, right? Assuming they would be using their own product, they would have deployed Hyper-V here. They might have deployed VMware as well. And on top of these, they will be running the virtual machines. Let's say VM1, VM2, and VM3, multiple virtual machines. Now, then whenever we create these virtual machines, there will be a guest operating system. Now this guest operating system could be Windows Server 2019, and it will have some hardware. Let's say four CPU, 60 GB there. Then this VM2 will also have an OS. Let's say it has got a Linux based OS, maybe Ubuntu based. Let's say eight CPU, 32 GB RAM. And this has got, let's say two vCPU and eight GB RAM. And on top of these machines, we can deploy the application. Application one, application two, and application three. So first of all, whenever we are deploying this virtual machine, it comes with the operating system. Now, when we are getting this operating system, these operating system files are very, very heavy files. So when we get this operating system, we get user interface files, we get shell API files, we get kernel files and we also get a hardware, right? So these kernel files, they are very, very heavy files. They are very, very heavy files. First of all, whenever this application will run, whenever a traffic will come for this application, would this application be able to consume all four CPU and 16 GB RAM? Answer is no. The reason is, in order to run the operating system files, in order to run the operating system files smoothly, some resources will be allocated for the OS files to be run smoothly. Let's say one CPU and two GB RAM would be reserved just to run the operating system files smoothly, right? And in order to run the application, do we really need the entire operating system files? No. To run the application, we do not need the entire OS files. So to run the application, we do not need the entire OS files. Still, we are deploying the entire OS files. And as a result of that, as a result of that, okay. And as a result of that, we are unable to utilize all the resources. So are we efficient? No, we are not efficient. Right? We are not efficient. Second thing, from where we are getting this operating system image, we are getting this operating system image from marketplace. We saw a few minutes back for the Jenkins as well. We can get this operating system image from marketplace, right? Okay. Let's say more and more traffic is coming for this application. So when more and more traffic will come for this application, it will try to consume more and more resources from here. If application will keep on increasing, a point will come when we would have utilized all the resources and no resources are left. Is it possible? If in case all the resources have been utilized and application two is not running, we would be able to utilize these resources. 
So if application two is not running, these resources are lying idle. So is it possible application one would be able to utilize these resources? Answer is no, no. we cannot do that. They are completely isolated instances. So we have resources, we are paying for the resources. Resources are lying idle, but we are unable to utilize them. Are we efficient? No. That is the reason this container comes into the picture. So again, we have a hardware. So let's say again, we have a hardware. On top of this, again, we can have a host operating system. On top of this, again, we can have a virtualization layer, which people called as container runtime, which is nothing but a Docker engine, okay? which is nothing but a Docker engine. One such tool is there is something called as Docker desktop. See, if you go here and if you type Docker desktop, so it looks like a tool. It looks like a tool, Docker desktop. You can download Docker desktop for Mac, for Windows, for Linux, for all three, right? So basically, if you try to download this, if you try to install this, you can do this on your machine. It looks like a tool. It looks like an application, but actually it acts like a Docker engine or it acts like a virtualization layer. Then on top of these, we can create the containers. So maybe container one, container two, and container three. Now these containers, they are very, very lightweight in nature. They are very, very lightweight in nature. Why they are lightweight in nature? These containers have not got the entire OS files. Whenever we are creating, see, whenever we were creating the virtual machines, we need the OS image. So whenever we will be creating these containers, we will be needing something called as Docker image. Let's say Docker image one or container number two. Let's say we need Docker image two, a different Docker image or container number three. Let's say we need Docker image three, right? So these Docker images, they are very, very lightweight in nature. They have just got user interface files and only certain libraries and binaries which are required for the application to run. So they have not got the entire OS files, only some libraries and binaries which are required for the application too. And then again, it will have some hardware. Let's say 1.5 CPU, 4 GB RAM. Let's say 1 vCPU, 2 GB RAM, or 1.5 vCPU, 4 GB RAM. And let's say 0 0.5 vCPU, 1 GB, right? So they are very, very lightweight in nature. How do we create these Docker images or how do we build these Docker images? There is something called as Docker file. Using the Docker file, we can create or we can build these Docker images. So these Docker images are very, very lightweight in nature. They can be created on the fly. They can be created on the fly means because they are lightweight in nature, it hardly takes fraction of seconds to spin a container and they can be stopped dynamically. They can be stopped dynamically means, see, first of all, whenever the traffic will come for this application, would this application be able to utilize all these resources? Yes, because Docker image is very, very lightweight. So image does not need the resources. So we application would be able to utilize almost all the resources, right? Second, let's say if traffic is coming for this application and traffic is increasing continuously. Let's say at the same time, this application two is not running. Is it possible application one would be able to utilize these resources? Yes, it is possible. How? If application two is not running, container number two will not keep on holding the resources. It can simply deallocate the resources. So if it will deallocate the resources, this 1.5 CPU and 4 GB RAM, this will come back to this hardware as the unallocated resources, right? This will come back to this hardware as the unallocated resources. What we need to do now, now we just need to create container number four. When we will be creating container number four, we will allocate the unallocated resources. This 1.5 CPU and 4 GB RAM. And we will be creating container number four with the same Docker image as was used in container number one, that is Docker image one. Right. So if we create container number four with Docker image one, same application number one will be running on container number four. Now we just need to distribute traffic between application 
between container one and container four. So they are lightweight in nature. They can be created on a fly and they can be stopped dynamically. Right. Now question is from where do we get this Docker image? So there is something called as Docker Hub. You can think of this Docker Hub like a public repository. In Docker Hub, 100,000 container images are lying or 100,000 Docker images are lying. So we can get the container images from Docker Hub. See, we can just type Docker Hub, the first URL hub.docker.com. So if we have an account here, we can simply log in with our account. If we do not have an account, we can simply register and we can create an account. If we do not have an account, we do not wish to create an account, we can scroll down and we can see here, Docker Hub is the world's largest library and community for container images. We can browse over 100,000 container images from software vendors, open source and community. We have got a lot of images here, right? So one option is this. Second option, we have something called as GitHub. We already know so many source codes are lying in GitHub. Some quick start images are also lying in GitHub. So we can also get the Docker images from GitHub. Now both Docker Hub and GitHub, they are the services outside Azure. Do we have a service in Azure from where we can get the Docker images or we can get the container images? We have a service called as ACR. ACR stands for Azure Container Registries. When we create this Azure Container Registries, inside this we get something called as repositories. Inside these repositories, we can store the Docker images. But by default, no image will be available inside this. Here also we need to use push and pull. Right? Here also we need to use push and pull. By default, no image would be available inside this. So we need to use push and pull. Push and pull means if in case we would like to store the image inside this repository, we have to push the image to this Azure container registry. And then whenever we will try to create a container, we can pull the image from this Azure container registry. And how can we create the container in Azure? There is a service called as ACI. ACI stands for Azure Container Instance. It's a pass service. Means the underlying machine where the containers will be running that will be controlled by Microsoft. So using this, we can create the containers. Using this, we can create the containers. Any question, any query guys, before we try to create a container? Any question, any query so far? No, for now on this, but uh, I have a past query that mm -hmm. uh, I sent on uh, the platform. Did not respond to it. Which how query? To how to navigate on? Uh, we wanted to create the. Well, we just started the course. Sorry, you want to find out what? Yeah, I said that the, the question was about uh, the way you are hired, perhaps in Toyota or Amazon or in another company that's already existing. Though I don't think that they'll be, they'll be hiring also create a, a brown fee projects just like that. We'll be able to, they want us to inform, in, update information in, that, in their system and then bring down all information and all the like. So I was thinking that- uh, that, will be the role of a, that, that will be the role of a developer, not of a DevOps engineer. That is a, okay. Your question you posted this in the chat. You have a worry with the plus classes. Okay. Let's yeah. say you are hired by a company, say Toyota or Amazon. I think you'll be hired to come and work as an engineer to always update the website, removing old items, putting new items, changing the prices always. One might also study to create his own online company. This is something which will be done by a developer, not by us. And then, uh... I should DevOps, the function we want because. Uh... See, Azure DevOps, whenever we have a team in the organization for Azure DevOps, it comprises of multiple people. There will be some developers, there will be some DevOps engineers, there will be some project manager, there will be some scrum masters too. Right? So roles are divided. One individual is not going to perform all the roles. As per your question, that role will be taken care by a developer, not by us. Right. 
Okay, I thought I thought we were supposed to have an idea of it. That's why I asked the question. And continue what we are where we are now. It doesn't miss up things. Okay, so let's see how can we create this container instance. We can simply let's say I can go to the portal here and I can type here Azure container instance. So we can create the container instance here. So here we can see the container instance, right? So maybe I can say create. So in which subscription, let's say in this subscription, in which resource group, let's say I would like to create this in RG1. What is the name of a container? Let's say I give it a name Jitin container one. In which region, let's say we are deploying it in the West US region, right? Now, image source. From where we will be getting the Docker image. So we can get this from the Azure container registry, but we have not created the Azure container registry yet. We can get it from the other registry. If you choose other registry, it clearly says it will take us to the Docker Hub. Or we can get it as a quick start image. This image is lying in GitHub. See, it is picking up ACI Hello World image. Can I see this ACI Hello World image? Yes. You can just type here in internet, ACI Hello World Docker image GitHub. If you just type it here, you would be able to see where it is lying. There's Azure samples, ACI Hello World GitHub. So here the files are lying using which the image has been built. These are the files. This is the application file. So using this ACI hello world, if you deploy an application and when you run the application, this is the message you will get. Welcome to Azure container instance, right? This is the message we will get. In which color? We will get this message in dark blue color. So we already know how this application will look like. Then we have something called as networking. In networking, we have two options, public and private. Public means this container instance will be getting a public IP, means it will be exposed to the internet. Let's say I want this container instance to be accessible only within my virtual network. Then I can go with private. If we go with private, it will get a private IP from our virtual network and it will be accessible only within our virtual network. So let's say I go with public. I'm giving it a public IP. So we can say within container one. We will access this on port 80 via TCP protocol. And we can say review and create. So we are creating this container instance. Right? We are creating this container instance. So it will be deployed in a moment here. Hello. Yes. Yeah, quick question. Mm -hmm. Are we not supposed to create this container on a command line? Are we supposed to create it like this? Or you can create by a command line too, absolutely. But but when, when we are working, are we supposed to do it like this or on the command line? I'm thinking that we're supposed to do it on the command line. You see, if you which command line you are referring, PowerShell or CLI? Yeah, because since we are doing, we are dealing with um, Windows, I, I believe we are supposed to do um, the uh, PowerShell. That's what I'm thinking. See, there are multiple ways of doing it. So you can do it via command line, you can do it via portal, whatever you feel is convenient. So if you know, see, you can simply write a command here. Maybe you can just say new AZ container instance, right? Like this, you can write a command. Then you can say, what is the name? Maybe you can give it a name, Jitin container one. In which resource group? Maybe you can say RG1. RG1. 
RG1 in which location? Let's say you would like to create this in the East US location. So you can do it like this. So if you know how to write in the PowerShell commands, you can create it like this. You can open PowerShell and you can write this command and you can create a container. But so, but the normal the normal requirement. I'm not sure, but the normal requirement, like most job, what they do, they want they want individual to write it on the on the command line. That's not true. Like that is not something that I have seen. Uh, is that you've not seen something like that? No, see, that's see, they will give you a task. Now it's up to you how you are going to perform that particular task. So if you are good with PowerShell, you can perform the task with PowerShell. There might be certain requirements where they might ask you to do some things on this, but not every time. Like... Okay, like here in, uh, excuse me, like in Canada, they always have a, a, about the number, of, the, the number of scripts that you know, the type of scripts that you know. The DevOps scripts uh, that you know. Yeah. What do you mean by DevOps scripts? Like uh, in job description, let me just look for one of the job description here. I don't know if I can send it to you later so you can look at it. Please, please send me that over a group or maybe you can send it to me personally as well. Uh... Uh, are you sending it now? Okay, just continue. I'll put it on the... Uh, sure, on the, sure. I'll, I'll yeah. pick it up from there. No problem. Okay. So we created this container and this container, see, we can see here, this container has got a public IP. So if I copy this public IP and if I put this public IP here, we can see we are able to access the application. This is how the application will flow. So we can run the application inside a virtual machine. Earlier, we tried to run the application as a app services, as a web app, we can also run the application inside a container, right? Now, what is container registry? How to push an image to the container registry? That is something we'll try to discuss on the next session. So that is all for my input today, right? So you can share the same job description in the chat. I'll pick it up from there. So have a good rest of the day. Take care, okay. stay safe. Can, can I ask one? Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah please go ahead, sir. Okay. So yesterday I see we set up. Um, yesterday we set up um, like the. I mean, yeah, we, we create the web web application and then the um, the SQL server and then the SQL application. Are we not supposed to um, um, implement? Um, um, or is that, are we not supposed to implement like, like a balancer? If you want to see, I think you, you are mixing too many things in the same training, right? Mm -hmm. See, if you want to get some training on the load balancer, on the traffic manager, on the Azure application gateway, uh, there is a training called as Azure administration or Azure architect. I think we will be starting the training from next weekend. From next weekend that will be started. So there we discussed all about that. So every training has a certain amount of concepts, certain number of modules, or certain topics that we discuss on a training, right? So concepts of load balance, concepts of virtual networking, concepts of other infrastructure, we discuss in other trainings, like in Azure administration, we discuss Azure architecture, we discuss. So we discuss it over there. We can we definitely set up a load balancer. If you have multiple machines where same application is running, we have to put a load balancer in front of it. Even load balancer is of four types. Load balancer, Azure application gateway, traffic manager, front door. What are the differences between these four? We discuss it on the different training, right? So, so but, but like in the job market, I mean, like when, say, if we are working, I think they will need something for us to do something like that. Are we not required to do like, to do something like that, to control, to control the amount of traffic that is going to the network? 
Absolutely, definitely required. So are we, are we going to do something like that? Yeah, but we do those things on a different training, not in this training. So we will be starting a different training on next week. That is for the AZ305. That is developing infrastructure solutions on Azure. There we discuss all those things. So if you want, you can enroll yourself for that particular training. There you would be able to learn all that part. Load balancer, networking also you would be able to learn. Storage you would be able to learn. A lot of other things, backup, migration. You would be able to learn all that part on that particular training. So, so how do we know that we are really fit? Like, I mean, we are capable of doing this um, because now that you have like different different parts, it's, it's a little bit confusing in a, in a, in, a, in such a way so that I think I think you should, how do you, you should, know that you are really yeah. capable of doing this job? See, because I believe they could have just mixed this thing at I mean, mix it, mix everything together, and then just teach everything. But now you are saying. See, you need to do your own research before before going for any training. You need to do your own research. For example, let's say I'll I'll show you something. If you just type here Microsoft Career Path or Microsoft Training yeah. Paths, or let's say we type here Microsoft Certification Path. So if you just do some research, then you will find out this information, right? So Microsoft certifications, or let me show you some images. So before you go with this DevOps training, ideally you should go with some administration training that will give you an idea of the infrastructure, right? Then we should jump on to this DevOps training. That is how it happens. Oh, so I see... need to do, so you're saying that, okay, because I've, okay. So it means I need to do some infrastructure training before doing this. Absolutely. That is what, that is what usually we do. If you have wow. a look at this Azure roadmap, there is always a roadmap for everything. It's not like we can directly jump to something, right? So if you have a look here, see first, maybe you can do 104 or 204, and mm -hmm. then maybe the, then maybe you can go to the expert level. This DevOps is the expert level training. So first you need to do an intermediate level training before this. Okay, which, do this before this. Yeah, yeah. so there is always a roadmap. So if you do some research before it, then probably this answer. You but if I do it. this and then combine it with this, then 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 I'm done. Is that what you say? Absolutely. Then you will have more understanding. Absolutely. Okay. Any other question? Yeah. 